Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Azam Khan. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. The People's Liberation Army continued its drills around Taiwan for the second day. Revelers were back in Kowloon City to celebrate the Thai New Year. And Pope Francis delivered his traditional Easter Sunday Mass at the Vatican. The People's Liberation Army has simulated precision strikes against key targets on Taiwan and its surrounding waters during the second day of military exercises. The drill simulated an encirclement of the island to send a stern warning to Washington for violating the One China Principle. Janice Lowe reports. Taiwan detected 71 aircraft flying around in the last 24 hours during the first day of military exercises by the People's Liberation Army, out of which 45 intruded the island's airspace by crossing an unofficial dividing line. PLA Navy ships continued patrolling the Taiwan Strait with a similar response from the other side. Over 58 aircraft, including bombers and fighter jets, were spotted from the island from 6 a.m. to noon today. The Army released a video today featuring both its Air Force and Navy conducting drills and coordinating simulated attacks. Battleships from both sides were involved in a tense standoff and the distance between them came down to just five nautical miles. The PLA's rocket army, which had the land-based missile system, also conducted long-range mock attacks on key targets in Taiwan and its surrounding waters. The latest round of military drills by the PLA were triggered after Tsai Ing-wen met with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and a bipartisan delegation of other members of Congress during a stopover in Los Angeles on her way back to Taiwan from Central America. After the meeting, McCarthy further aggravated the situation by suggesting to increase arms sales to Taiwan. Life in Taiwan has continued as normal, with no sign of panic or disruption from the drills. Washington has urged China not to exploit Tsai's U.S. visit as a pretext for the drills and has called for restraint. Janice Lo, HKIBC. The Hong Kong Army Cadets Association held their first flag-raising ceremony in more than three years. Army cadets gathered at the Golden Bohemia Square for the ceremony at 8 a.m. today. Youth Minister Alice Mack was also present at the event. The tradition was halted for the past three years due to COVID. A private car burst into flames after crashing with another vehicle on Bride's Pool Road in Taipo last night. Four people from one car were injured, while the driver of the vehicle which caught fire was arrested. Macy Mock reports. An online video captured the aftermath of a crash involving two cars in Taipo last night. One of the vehicles was engulfed in flames in the middle of the road. Luckily, the driver was able to get out of the car. Please save my wife, shouted a man from the other car, which had stopped on the side of the road. Firefighters rescued two female passengers from the vehicle, which was not on fire. Their 20-year-old driver and another 29-year-old male passenger were also sent to hospital. One woman and the other male passenger remain in critical condition, while the other 25-year-old female is still serious. The driver is stable and recovering. The gray car in which the four were traveling was severely damaged in the crash, and its airbags were deployed after the collision. Police said the gray car was driving on Bright's Pool Road when it got hit by a white car which was driving in the opposite lane. After the crash, the white car then burst into flames and was burnt beyond recognition. The front of the car was mangled rack and the seats were deformed due to the fire. Some parts of the vehicle detached after the impact and were scattered around the accident site. Police detained the 40-year-old driver of the white car for dangerous driving and causing grievous bodily harm. Ms. Mock, HKIBC. Commuters took advantage of fare discounts on the MTR for the second straight day today. 
However, not all travelers could avail the 50% discount. Those commuting on monthly tickets had to pay normal fares. Lawmaker Ben Chan suggested the operator should compensate monthly ticket holders. He urged the railway company to reveal the number of people who took advantage of the fare discounts over the weekend and added it should be implemented on weekdays as the number of commuters on a normal weekend could be smaller compared to the holiday weekend. Earlier, the railway operator announced a fare hike of 2.3% from the middle of this year. After a three-year hiatus, mass water fights to celebrate the Thai New Year returned to Kowloon City. Similar festivities were also held in Chung Sha Wan as the city marked Easter Sunday. Here's Macy Mock. No one could stay dry for long during the wild water fights this afternoon in Kowloon City, also known as Hong Kong's Little Thailand. Hundreds of people equipped with water guns, buckets, and hoses sprayed water at each other to celebrate Songkran, the Thai New Year. Even police officers monitoring the event got into the festive mood. The Thai Consul General wished people on the occasion. After a few years pause due to the pandemic, I'm very glad that today the Thai Songkran festivities have fully really returned to Hong Kong so that we can enjoy the beautiful Thai traditions and embark on the new year together with happiness, good health and prosperity. Very happy, this boy said. He aims to shoot water at as many people as he can this afternoon. Meanwhile, this woman who is from Thailand brought her son to the event. I was living here for five years. I thought it's a good chance to take my son to, you know, feel a bit of Songkran. And, you know, it wasn't happened for, for a while, right? So I think it's a good chance and everybody have fun. Aside from splashing water on others, bathing a statue of the Buddha is also a part of the tradition to wash away misfortune. Booths giving a glimpse of Thai handicrafts were open at the Carpenter Road Park in Kowloon City. Similar celebrations were also held in Chan Sha Wan. <laughs> Cheng Yi Street was sealed to make way for the Nang Song Kran Parade, where people celebrated with music and dance. Although Hong Kong celebrated the festival today on Easter Sunday, the actual dates for the new year in Thailand falls on April the 13th. Maisie Mok, HKIBC. Financial Secretary Paul Chan pointed out that now is the best time for Hong Kong to develop Web3. He revealed that the city will be holding four related large-scale events this week, attracting founders and executives from Web3 companies to Hong Kong. Janice Lowe reports. Taking to his weekly blog, the financial secretary noted that some people have been skeptical in their outlook towards Web3, the next generation of internet technologies, due to recent volatility of the virtual assets market. However, Paul Chan pointed out that now is the best timing for Web3 development. The government has already set aside $15 million for Cyberport to expedite the third-generation internet ecosystem development by hosting international seminars and workshops for youngsters. At least four Web3-related events will be held in the city this week, attracting founders and senior officials from Web3 enterprises worldwide to Hong Kong. After the dot-com bubble burst in early 2000, Chen said survivors are more focused on innovation, application, and creating value. He believes Web3 is undergoing the same process as well. With the licensing regime for virtual assets service providers to be launched in June, Chen added that the government is also looking into regulating stable coins so that the industry would have a sustainable and responsible development. Janice Lo, HKIBC. Chinese health officials have asked the World Health Organization to stop politicizing the origins of COVID-19. This comes after the UN Health Agency said that mainland officials did not provide key data 
on the origins of the virus. After the World Health Organization accused China of withholding key data concerning the origins of COVID-19, the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention hit back saying that it had provided all available information during a weeks-long joint study on the pandemic's origins in 2021. Shen Hongbing, the director of the CDC, said that the World Health Body should not become a tool for countries who look to politicize the origins of the virus. It goes against the spirit of science, he added. Earlier, WHO chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said all hypotheses are on the table with regards to how the virus first came into being until China shared withheld data, including that on wild animal trade at a market in Wuhan. Analysis of the initial data provided by Chinese scientists suggests that DNA samples collected in Wuhan showed raccoon dogs sold at the market could be the hosts, but the information did not specify where the people who interacted with the animals got sick. Tong Yigang, a Chinese animal disease expert who was part of the 2021 joint study with the WHO, said that the evidence was not sufficient to prove the origin of the virus. Pope Francis delivered mass to tens of thousands of Catholics in St. Peter's Square to mark Easter Sunday. Still recovering from bronchitis, the 86-year-old pontiff skipped the Good Friday procession in Rome due to the cold weather. Pope Francis led the traditional mass on Easter Sunday at St. Peter's Square in Vatican City, in front of tens of thousands of followers and tourists. Fratelli e sorelle, la gioia dell'annuncio della resurrezione del Signore giunge a noi dalla veglia pasquale. Dead after his crucifixion, Francis sprinkled holy water to commence the mass, but sounded somewhat tired as he recited scriptures in Latin. Some 45,000 people had gathered in front of St. Peter's Basilica by the start of the mid-morning mass. The pontiff then spent nearly 20 minutes going around the square in the Popemobile, wishing and greeting worshippers and tourists alike. He was back in the public's eye after a very long Easter vigil ceremony in St. Peter's Basilica the night before. The 86-year-old Pope is recuperating from bronchitis that saw him hospitalized for a few days over a week ago. He skipped Good Friday Mass due to cold weather conditions. Onto the weather now, mostly cloudy with a few light rain patches in the morning, followed by sunny periods. Temperatures will range between 19 and 23 degrees. More sunny periods into the midweek. That's our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Azam Khan. Thanks for watching. Good night.